respected designers, typographers, my calligraphy colleagues, and my very dear students. Namaskar and good morning. I'm very happy to be here to share my research journey. Since yesterday we have traveled through Singapore and Sri Lanka and seen and heard so much about Malayalam to Modi scripts. Today, through this short presentation, I shall take you to the Blue Mountains of Southern India, commonly known as the Nilgiris, to introduce you to a community called as the Kota. Before I tell you about the theoretical part of it and the typography and their culture, we'd like to see just a one minute film to get an understanding of how this community is. Please. of southern India and also to introduce you to this community called as the Kota tribe. As you see, women dominated. Okay, so I'll be addressing uh, three topics in my presentation. Uh, first is culture in general and that of the Kota community. Second, typography of the Kota script. And thirdly, my concerns related to this particular script. Now, in the institute where I teach, we have a unique undergraduate program called as the Discover India program, wherein we as faculty, as mentors, get a chance to travel along with a group of 10, 12 students, which you saw in the film also, to various parts of India to do research on culture-centric topics. Uh, and as uh, today we have heard from Professor Greg and also yesterday from Deshna, uh, different uh, definitions on culture. I shall skip this slide and move ahead. Now, yesterday Sri Ganesh Devi with his thought provoking brilliant keynote address spoke on a macro level uh, about the tribal languages in India being uprooted from official thinking of languages and the need for tribal languages to be organically rooted. Today I present one such case study. Now the geographic, geographic location of this particular tribe. The Nilgiri Hills is one of the smallest districts of Tamil Nadu. The word Nilgiri means blue mountains because of the haze of the clouds and mist which envelopes the range. The name Nilgiri has been given to the land by the people living at the foot of these mountains. The hill has a total area of 2,549 square kilometers with an average elevation of 6,000 feet. This district shares borders with predominantly three other regions, namely Kerala from the west, Karnataka from the south and Baikoyamthur from the southeast. Currently, there are four indigenous tribes in the Nilgiri regions, the Kota who are artisans, the Todas who are pastoral communities and also known as the lords of the soil, the Padagals are farmers and cultivators who live an agrarian life, while the Kurumbas are hunters who hunt honey, uh, a very, very risky job which they do, who live a nomadic life. The traditional role of these communities has brought them into a healthy symbiotic relationship with each other and helped maintain equilibrium within the Blue Mountains of the South. So you can see in the slide over there, right on top, you have these two communities, the Toda and the Kota, where we went to do research about these two communities. Um, yeah. The Central Government of India has identified the Kota as one of the 75 PTGs, that is a primitive tribal groups in India. The rationale behind the identification of being termed as rural or as primitive is based on these four factors. One, pre-agricultural level of technology, stagnant population, extremely low literacy rate and subsistence level of economy. Now just a brief to understand the culture of this particular community. 
the, the quota name is derived from Ko, meaning king. The quota people believe that their forefathers were kings. The place where they have settled is called as a Kokkal. The name Kotagiri implies to the mountain of the Kotas. This significance was given by the people during the time of British rule in India. The name Kota was given by outsiders. They address themselves as Kove. They are known for their isolation and their unwillingness to meet or mix with outsiders. They are currently around 2,000 only and are fast declining. The Kota are consanguineous tribes which are related by blood. The act of marrying closely related individuals has taken place because of the tribe's voluntary isolation uh, in the community. The Kota speak the... Uh, the Kota speak the Kota language of Kov Manth, a Dravidian language closely connected to the Todas, also which has strong linguistic affiliations with very early Tamil and Malayalam. All Kota speak Badaga as, and Tamil as well, as in the past they had to communicate with other people who didn't know their language. They are inclined towards religion and spiritual belief. Interestingly, the Toda community do not have a script yet. So we went to study the scripts of these two communities, but we came back with only the Kota script. The Kotas are craftsmen, musicians and drummers, and the ones extending these services to other adjoining communities. These Kota tribal communities are experts in art and craftsmanship. Now I'll briefly take you to three life rituals which are very interesting in this community. One is marriage. The women in Kota tribe only marry their blood relations or relatives. The wedding is a simple affair where the bridegroom bows to the feet of the bride's father, pays a token fee of uh, anything between 50 paise to 100 rupees and there is no conventional bang baja barat system over there. That's the end of the beginning and end of the marriage. It's so simple. Coming to the religion, the Kota has a number of deities, some traditionally their own and some taken from Hindu religion. The Kota believe that their gods or Somi live in heaven or Kalimgiri, which is somewhere in the sky far above the sun. They revere anything associated with the sky, such as the sun, moon and stars, which they say possess virtues which are otherwise lacking in earthly being, being space. Kota people paint their faces in ghost like blue color to signify the transformation of a boy to a man. They believe that in order to become a man, a child must die. Thus, the ghost like blue paint is an indication of the death of their childhood. In the past, they would sacrifice wild animals after the boy's schooling is completed. Today, gifts of money have taken the place of sacrificing wild animals. The Kota do not consider themselves to be Hindus. However, there are various temples in and around the settlements where deities such as Lord Krishna are worshipped. All the Kota villages are bound by certain limitations, a particular hairstyle and dress code that needs to be maintained. The cow is a sacred animal of this community. The gods do not have human manifestation. Lord Ainur, which represents fire, and Lord Amanor, which represents a bow and arrow, are their main gods. Their rituals are different from other tribes. Now, even at ritual like death, there are two types of funeral ceremonies in this particular community. The first one being the green <coughs> funeral, in which the cremation is shortly after the death of a person. And the second is called as a dry funeral, which is held once a year or once in two years for all the deaths that have occurred since the last funeral. And the terms are analogy to, the, to a cut plant. At the first funeral, the loss is green and fresh in the mind, and at the second, it is dried out. So here we see the Kota women with a peculiar hairstyle and a very peculiar way of wearing their saris, uh, very similar to the Malayalam uh, way of uh, uh, wearing a, a, the color and the typical golden band, but different in its own aspect. So now we come down to the main uh, topic that is this particular script called as a Kota script. And here you see Guru Karak Raj and we were fortunate to get this small booklet as the first dictionary in the year 2010 in the month of May when we visited him. So I'll show you uh, this dictionary during uh, the break for those who are interested and a few slides to see how this script has uh, similarities between Malayalam and Tamil in case they do. 
So enveloped in urban settings with languages and literacy being easily available to us, it is difficult for us to imagine that there do exist people, cultures and communities who are still trying to figure ways of creating visual expressions to their verbal language. Guru Kanak Rajji, the Kota priest, has created the first Kota dictionary, a script which was born in 2010. The Kotas are indigenous people who amongst all the Indian languages are the, are the ones with no retroaphasic vowels like the one setra or ro, these vowels do not exist in this particular script. What we see right on top is the Tamil letter forms, o, r, e, e, u, u, the vowels, and below them are the Kota letter forms. Here you see few others, ta, da, tha, dha, pa, ba, ka, ka. Now, so the total number of vowels in this particular script of quota are 11, the consonants are 21 and the combination of vowels and consonants are 230. So the total uh, numbers are 252 which are more than the Tamil letter forms. Now if we see the words right to the extreme left, we have certain words which we identified as come, go, eat, drink. So if uh, in the Tamil language is come is if come is va, it it is va in kota as well. But there are differences in other words like if go is po in Tamil, that it is oak in uh, kota. So not all the words are similar, but they do have their own uh, transformation and adaptations according to the culture and according to their own language. So there are many more pages, but I'll stop over here because it is just a repetition. So to conclude, we can see the nascent stage of the quota script. It has yet to develop the fonts that can be printed. All the quota letters in the dictionary are handwritten alongside the Tamil letters which do have fonts. As discussed, the most unique factor of this paper is primarily acknowledging the birth of a script in the beginning of the 21st century. The intention of presenting this paper among this August audience is not merely to create awareness but to derive means to honor and preserve a script that is just born. There couldn't be a better platform. Thank you.